Let's talk about the Michigan offense heading into this game. Um, certainly been a talking point this week coming off of the win over USC. Alex Orgy getting his second career start. We'll see what he has around him in terms of the weapons. Colston Loveland. We'll see what Marlon Klein's status is uh, in this game as well. But I think there's no question that now that you have a game of film out there on you and you know you were able to get the win over USC, but there's got to be a, a better level of consistency here. One stat that stands out to me is eight punts last game, seven completed passes, right? You don't want that to, to be the case. I know we talked about the stat you know, after game one that you know, more uh, made field goals than, than extra points for Dominic Zavada. That was actually through a couple of weeks. You don't want that either, but uh, this Michigan offense, maybe try to take a next step here with Alex Orgy behind center. Yeah, 2.7 yards per attempt, I think it was, guys. Am I breaking up by any chance? Nope. No. Okay, good. All right. 2.7 yards per attempt. That struck that sucks. Uh, it's got to be better. And uh, to me, USC kind of put the blueprint on paper, right? That, okay, cover zero in the second half. We're going to bring our safeties up. Yeah, you're going to try to run the ball. We're going to try to, you're going to have to do something different. And uh, if not for Kalel Mullings, then Clayton Safety doesn't win staff picks last week and we're all making fun of him. Instead, he's a hero, right? So if it weren't um, for the thing that I predicted to happen happening, then I would have lost. <laughs> oh, you predicted that Kalel Mullings would break a third and one 60 something yard run? I predicted so, they win by three, baby. Let's you did, go. absolutely. So uh, the point being, though, you aren't going to get those miracles every week. So they need to be more consistent. They need to have some semblance of a passing game, which they do not right now. And um, I don't know that it's sustainable. I've said that. I hope it is. I hope that Alex Orgy is a better thrower than we think he is. And I don't think we have any evidence of that. So hopefully he shows up and uh, and kills it. But that's why I think this is going to be a lower scoring tight game for a good portion of it. P.J. Flex is a good football coach. So you know that they are going to make them earn everything they get. They're going to take away what Michigan wants to do and kind of try to put him in positions and make – make him uncomfortable, Alex Orgy. And uh, I think we've seen that that's possible. So they're going to need some better blocking from up front too. Defense is going to have to win. Can't give up any big plays, fellas, uh, in this game. Uh, it's, you've got you've to limit those and because this is probably going to be a, a late third quarter game, at least in my opinion, the way this offense is struggling. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest task right now is – is leveling out some of the peaks and valleys, right? Like you, you won't trade those explosive plays for anything. It's not, you can't treat them as hypotheticals. You can't say, Oh, well you take this run away from Kalel Mullings. You take this run away from Donovan Edwards. No, those things happen. Um, and I think those things can continue to happen because I think those guys are really good players. And I think that in the run blocking game, this offensive line, I, I think has gotten better the first four weeks. Now to me, I mean, I think for this offense, one, you obviously, like, obviously like, the vacuum of one game, yeah, what they did last week against USC got the job done. But you just aren't going to win many football games unless you're a service academy uh, where you're, you know, throwing the ball for 32 yards. Um, so for me, it's less about, you know, is is the run game. The run game is absolutely sustainable. We've seen that plenty of times at Michigan. And yeah, this line is a notch or two below, maybe a couple notches below what we've gotten used to seeing. but. For me, it's about just find not even finding a way to be balanced, finding a way to make the defense honest, finding a way to cash in on some of the opportunities that these loaded boxes are going to give you. Um, you look at last week, the drive chart, two touchdowns in five first half possessions, and then you go punt, 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 punt. That's four punts, then a fumble, then a punt, and then the game winning touchdown drive. I mean, that's where. I think you can come out early and kind of establish yourselves. I think the biggest challenge for everyone and what made Michigan's offense so good last year is the ability to zig when everyone else zags or when these other teams make adjustments. Um, they did not adjust well to what USC did to them in the second half. And to me, I think that's uh, you know finding ways to level that out, finding ways to do different things based on what the defense gives you. Uh, just take what the defense gives you, uh, I think is critical. So um, can they sustain it? I look at what Iowa did to Minnesota last week and say, yes, Michigan can absolutely sustain that. And But again, I mean, you look at the schedule for Minnesota. I mean, they, they host USC next week. You look at who they play 
there's not a lot of gimmies on there for them either. And, and there's a path to getting Michigan in a rock fight in this game. So, yeah, I mean, those guys are well coached. They're going to play physical. I don't think they're going to, you know, fold shop like USC did at times in the first half of that game. So this is a challenge this week. This is uh, if last week was reestablishing what your identity is, this week has to be peeling back another layer of that. Yeah, I watched the entire Iowa Minnesota game the other night and it was interesting because nothing for Iowa early in the game came easy. Um, Cade was checking down everything and they were just a couple yard gains and they weren't running the ball all that well, even though they had Caleb Johnson, who was an unbelievable running back uh, for the Hawkeyes. And then the second half, they just kept leaning on them, leaning on them. They started to win up front and Minnesota really had no answer. It turned into a blowout by the end of it, even though Minnesota was up 14, seven at halftime. Um, I think Michigan could do something similar. Um, but at the same time, Minnesota was banged up in the secondary. They missed a lot of tackles. Uh, we'll see if they get a couple guys back, including Justin Wally, their best corner, uh, and their starting strong safety who was out. So those could be factors here as well. Uh, they have a great nickelback, Jack Henderson, who's played really well early on this season. Uh, but I, again, like can Michigan move the football consistently in this game? They had three rushes of 40 plus yards last week. They had seven of those all of last season. Uh, right now, in, in terms of 40 plus yard rushes, Michigan, I think, is top 10 right now this year. And, you know, so relatively speaking, like it doesn't happen all that often to rip those off. So you're going to have to find something else. Uh, but you may not have to find something else this week if Minnesota plays like they did last week, which is no guarantee, but certainly a, a matchup that I think favors Michigan going in, but every week's different and, and we'll see how it plays out. Um, anything else on the Michigan offense before we flip it over to the defense? Yeah, I just hopefully Colson Loveland plays. I think it's leaning yeah. that way. And I think that's a huge safety net for Alex Orgy or any quarterback, right? Yes. He's their best receiver, not just their best tight end. So uh, you get him back, I think that will help. So, But they've got to take a few more shots, fellas. They've got to expand this thing. If they're planning on going with Alex Orgy for the rest of the year, it's not just about beating Minnesota, guys. It's about winning at Washington. It's about beating Oregon. It's about... Uh, beating, you know, it, winning at Illinois on the road, which doesn't look easy. Even Indiana, uh, it's funny because I, you know, again, I make fun of their coach, but he's a, a good football coach, clearly. So uh, we'll see. But that's where it is right now, and they are what they are. So hopefully they're a little bit more than that this week. Yeah, I think the Colson Lovell thing is is a great point. You know, you get hopefully your best offensive weapon back. That's a, you know, you can leak him out and he can be a check down guy. He'd be a guy that takes those check downs farther than most guys would. Um, I want to see that. I want to see these wide receivers get a little more involved. Uh, have done a pretty solid job run blocking, especially look at some of the stuff that Fred Moore's done on film. I think he's kind of an ascending player, but um, yeah, I mean, you have to start showing something more. And, uh, you know, they have the pieces to do that. I think a lot of these guys have a lot more to give and, and this coaching staff has a lot more to give. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But offensively, I, I can see the plan being very similar to what it was and them still winning that way. So, uh, you know, again, it's leave it to Michigan to have a big win and then send you into a week where you still don't really know much about them. Yeah. I think if you're Alex Orgy, the, the bare minimum, like he did last week was not turning over the ball and in, in winning the game as he talked about on, on Monday when we got to talk to him. Um, and ball security will be important uh, in this game because I think it is going to be somewhat low scoring and a game where the margins are going to be – the margin for error will be very small. Uh, so Michigan just has to avoid mistakes first and foremost because the first half of last week's game kind of played out how you wanted it to in terms of field position. You know They were able to move the ball a little bit on that first drive to kind of start winning that battle. And that's a good start. It's not all you need to do, but uh, it is something that that is a requisite here to competing and winning this game, in my opinion, 